The owner of the field is calling his laborers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Father Angel from the Mission of San Andrew in Tijuana, Diocese of Mexico, of the Orthodox Church in America. Welcome to the Gospel for June the 22nd, 2020, according to St. Matthew. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, who also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. You receive without payment. Give without payment. Glory be to thee, O God. Glory be to thee. What is it that we are talking about today? What are we talking about today? Well, there is only one owner, which is God. And Jesus is God. That is why just right after an, an, an owner of the entire universe, because he created it. And there is no other God besides from him, from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he is the owner. He is the Lord of the harvest. And he tells his disciples, pray that the owner will send laborers. And that is one thing that we should do every day. Lord, send, send bishops, send priests. Then, immediately, he calls his twelve. It's Christ who calls the twelve. It's not someone that likes to think or to entertain the thought of being a pastor, uh, a great apostle, and then, uh, oh, I have this gift for speaking, and I like to... And I know how to make business, and I'm going to do my mega church. I'm going to do this uh, uh, church of uh, universal church, or whatever it is, or the Mormons, and whatever. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. It is Christ who incarnated Himself. He didn't want. He wasn't there in the air, filling the minds of the people and calling them. And, no. He was a person, a real person, a touchable person that actually talked to the people and he called them personally. And those twelve, one of those twelve was a traitor. The one that deceived him, that, not that deceived him because he knew who he was, but the one that betrayed him, the Judas Iscariot. But then afterwards he was, um, he was substituted by Matthias. And God himself, again Christ himself, called St. Paul. And those 13, not just 12, nor 11, but 13 in the end, also, each one of them, let's say, the first 12, or rather the first 11, because by the time that the Christ came with them, resurrected, the Iscariot had hanged himself, so there were only 11 they received the Holy Spirit from the Lord, the resurrected, directly. He blew upon them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whomever sins you forgive you are forgiven. And so on, so on. And those, through them, one of them imposed the hands upon Paul. And each one of them 
throughout 2,000 years. Impose the hands on somebody that in turn imposed the hands on somebody all the way down to my Archbishop, His Eminence Alejo, who imposed his hands on me. It is, that is apostolic succession. So it is very different. And then we see how the Lord says, drive out demons, clean lepers. And we have an apostolic see that departed from the communion of the church and the faithfulness to, to the Christ and are setting their own law against the very words of the Lord. Because the Lord said, you are to give it free because you did not pay. And they want to charge you for the sacraments and stuff like that. And not only that. Whereas the Lord is saying, everyone should do that. Drive out the demons. You have the authority to do that. These guys say, well, if there are 200 or 300 priests in a, in a single diocese, only one will be able to drive out demons. Because their bishop has to approve that. And there are the other guys, the guys that uh, the, reformed, the reformed ones, the Protestants that just like to appoint themselves, that absolutely have no power over the unclean spirits. And they think they have. But they, in the end, end up being possessed themselves by the demons. Because the seal that is given by God to his anointed ones, like myself, it's not because we bought it, it's not because we deserve it, it's not because anything, but rather for your sake, for your sake. So if we are truly faithful to God, His grace, not my power, personal power, but His grace, the Holy Spirit, the action of the Holy Spirit will bless you, will heal you, will drive out the demons from you. Think about it. For blessed is our God always, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen.